Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh and His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh is the name of the one true God, and Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. And I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And I want to send salutations to all the Akim throughout the four corners of the earth, exalting the name of Yahweh and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, in truth and in sincerity. All right, so this lesson is going to be about um, a clip that I saw from this brother right here on the screen. I'm guessing he runs a podcast or does videos on events and things of that nature. Um, you know, uh, basically on, uh, world events and things of that nature, I'm guessing, you know, and, uh, and in this, uh, video, he started mentioning, uh, the Israelites and the things that they were saying and how the things that he heard as a, as a young man now are starting to come true. And that's exactly what a prophecy is and what a prophet does. A prophet says something that will happen in the future that's prophecy so the men that he heard were prophesying and he heard it okay and now in his uh later years as an adult he's realizing that the things that they said in the past and his, you know in his life are starting to come true and he's starting to become a believer and he said, I hate to admit it, but they, they were they were telling the truth. And because that's all a prophet should be doing is telling the truth, not sparing your feelings and all that stuff. Just telling you the truth and you can accept it or not accept it. All right. And this brother has finally come to the fact that the things that the Israelites were saying are starting to come true because things that we have been saying are coming true. And I'm not even going to mention it because I don't want to get a flag or whatever. But you know. So I'm going to go ahead and play this clip and get these scriptures. Uh, it's a shame where this is going, but unfortunately, this needed to happen. So everything that's happening now, the breakdown of the country, the fucking constant bitterness, the division, all of this shit needed to happen. It was supposed to happen. This was written for us a long time ago. And though when I was a kid, I really didn't subscribe to it or believe it, but now I'm starting to believe it. And believe it or not, guys, here's the fucked up shit. And I hate to I hate to admit to this, but the the Israelites, right? Those are the guys that used to hang out on 42nd Street. They used to scream at white people, you white devil, and, you know, like, run around with the devil horns, and you fucking white people fucked us over. But they used to stop yelling at white people for, like, five minutes, and they used to talk about the mark of the beast and all this little crazy shit that is happening now. That being said, these same guys who hated white men read a white guy's book called uh, Behold a Pale White Horse, or Behold a Pale Horse, right? They read this book, and they were saying that shit. And in that book, it said the same thing. Guys, it's just insane how the people we ignored who were standing on the street corner with their signs about the end is near or some crazy shit was going to happen, we ignored them. We ignored the Israelites who, listen, again, I don't subscribe to them. I don't. But for everything they said when I was a kid, it's coming true. Lewis boom straight from the horse's mouth you heard him and that's how a lot of people are going to be when these prophecies start to um be more uh, un unfolded and uh they start getting caught off guard by the prophecies because they're going to see them and for many people it'll be too late to repent because the doors of repentance are open now the hand of mercy is extended to you but they refuse the mercy and they refuse to take hold of mercy right now because they're stubborn and they're hard headed. So eventually those doors of mercies, that door of mercy is going to be closed eventually. But you see right here, he has an audience of, was it 36,000 have watched this? Hey, you've been marked. What can I say? Because what we've been saying has been true. All right. This is Luke 6 and 25. Woe unto you that are full. For ye shall hunger. 
Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. So those that are, that are laughing now, those that are that are with the agenda that's going on right now, all right, those that are are, are still, um, you know, saying partying and giving in marriage, you know, as in the days of Noah, because we are now in, as in the days of Noah, where it talks about how the flood came and they didn't and they didn't expect it and it swept them away. That's how it's going to be now. That's why the Bible tells you that the Lord cometh like a thief in the night. So you so so the prophecies are going to sneak up on them and the Lord's going to sneak up on them. All right, because you're not watching. You're not paying attention to what's going on. All right. So right now, you know, these people are full right now. They're full of pride. They're full of wickedness. So guess what? When that time comes, guess what? You're going to be hungry. You're going to be hungry for 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 help. You're going to be hungry for shelter. You're going to be hungry for 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 protection. And guess what? The Lord is not going to give you that. He's not going to give you that cloak to cover you. He's not going to give you that shield to 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 keep you uh, shielded from danger. No, those angels are not going to be covering you. They're going to be covering the elect. They're going to be covering the ones that, that actually obeyed. All right? Not you, not the wicked. Because you refuse the hand of the Lord. Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry out loud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. And show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. And that's what a prophet's supposed to do. And that's what those men on the corner that this brother had heard, that's what they were doing. Lifting up their, their voice like a trumpet and showing their people their transgressions. That's what a prophet's supposed to do. And now you see an example right here of a brother that is admitting that he did, he doesn't subscribe, he doesn't believe, he's not a believer, but he cannot he can never say that the things that he's seeing were not told to him by the Israelites. He can't say it. But our job is just to warn you, and here's the reason why. This is Ezekiel three and seventeen, son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me when i say unto the wicked thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood will i require at thy hand why because you didn't warn him so because you didn't warn the wicked when the wicked die that blood is on your hand because you didn't warn him verse 19 Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn from his wickedness, uh, nor from his, his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. So that's how you deliver your soul, is to warn the people. All right? Because now the blood is off your hands. Hey, you, you're not guilty of not warning your brother, your neighbor. Okay? So now the blood is off your hands. So now you're innocent all right and they're going to be found guilty in the court of law when the lord is uh, bringing his judgment all right so the prophets are out here all right the uh, famine of the word is coming and uh jake better take heed because time is running out with that all praises honor and glory to you how will bahashem yahweh